G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Look at all the stuff on my bench. Look at it all. What is it? Well, it's FPV gear. And it's not your average run-of-the-mill FPV gear. It's on a different band because we're running out of space on the FPV bands. If you go to a mini quad race meet, even if you're running race band, sometimes it can be hard to find a frequency that someone else isn't using. And we went to spread spectrum with our radio control systems, but now we find ourselves going back to a pegboard for the video systems because there's just not enough space for all the video signals out there when everyone wants to fly at once. So we have traditionally 5.8 gigahertz. There's a 5.8 gigahertz antenna. And it's simple, it's easy, it's quick, it's cheap, and it just works, but it's limited in range. It doesn't go far, it doesn't go through trees and buildings and things very well. Get a lot of multi-path reflections if you're flying in a built-up area. Yeah. So it has strengths and weaknesses. When people want to go a lot further, they've used something like uh, was it 1.280 gigahertz which is in the handband but the problem is if you're going down to that lower frequency suddenly your antennas get huge look at the size of that that's a 1.280 gigahertz antenna it's massive look at the comparison it's just there's no comparison you cannot really easily practically oops, excuse me while i reach out a shot put one of these on, on one of these mini quads it's just silly besides you get hooked up in the trees be useless so there you go so we also can send video over 2.4 gigahertz and some people do but if you're going to use 2.4 gigs for your video, you can't use 2.4 gigs for your radio control because they'll clash. Your video transmitter will what we call desensitize your RC receiver. In fact, it's shouting so loudly on the same frequencies that your RC receiver can't hear your RC transmitter. So you don't get any range. And also you'll get lines all over your video picture as well because your, video, your RC transmitter, which is going to be right beside your video receiver, is going to interfere with that. So it's a big just doesn't work just doesn't work reliably so there you go so what can we do we've got 5.8 we've got 2.4 and we've got 1.280 for frequencies would it be nice if there was something somewhere in between you know that would give us the benefits of both well hold your horses because that's what this is this is new gear which is uh, being sent in by hobby wireless see hobby wireless there they sent this in for review and i'll show you the box look can you read that has it focused i don't know 3.3 .3 gigahertz Woohoo! I mean, this is the first time I've seen gear on commercially available on the market at 3.3 gigahertz. And that means that the antennas are, yes, they're bigger than 5.8, but not that much bigger. See the difference there? <laughs> and they're a hell of a lot smaller than those uh, 1.28 gigahertz antennas, way smaller. So it's going to give us some real benefits. Um, it's going to have, hopefully, the simplicity, ease of use, and relatively low cost of the 5.8 gigahertz. It's going to be small, compact, lightweight, and it'll give us more range than 5.8 because high, lower frequencies generally give you more range because there's a thing called path loss. And that's basically the amount of the signal that gets absorbed by the environment. And as you go down in frequency, that absorption by the environment reduces. So you get more distance for the same amount of power. So by my quick reckoning, I haven't actually calculated it out, but, but just sort of um, off the top of my head, I'd say that probably the 3.3 the gigahertz is going to give you 35 to 40 percent more range in, in practical terms per milliwatt than 5.8. So, you know, if you've got a 250 or 200 milliwatt 5.8 transmitter and you're getting, say, two kilometers, then you're going to get, you know, maybe 2.8 kilometers out of this, maybe three kilometers. I don't know, maybe more. So it just depends on the environment. But also these you get a little bit less multi-pathing, you get less reflections off the buildings and ground, and it will penetrate slightly better. So if you're going ducking behind a tree, you might get a total dropout with 5.8, you might get a, a little bit of snowiness with 3.3. .3. So there's, there's, there's some benefits there. You've got to ask yourself, of course, well, why haven't people used 3.3 .3 gigahertz before? Why, if it's so wonderful, why not use it? Well, there is a downside to everything, of course. And just like the 1.280 gigahertz, 3.3 gigahertz is on the ham band. There's a ham band allocation at 3.3, 3.4 gigahertz. So if you want to use this legally, you're going to have to get your ham license. And also you need to check the rules in your country because it's not necessarily the same in every country. So unless you want to get the potential for a huge fine, have your gear confiscated and really get a wrap over the knuckles, to use this gear, you're going to have to sit your ham ticket. Okay, and you know, that's what I'd recommend people do. So that not only does it mean that you are legal, but also gives you a bit more insight because the stuff you learn when to get your ham ticket is useful stuff. Now, what I'm going to do if people are interested and put your comments in the section below the description of this video if you are, if you're really keen, I will organize a series of videos, a playlist of videos, which walk you through getting your ham ticket, basically covering the topics that you need to know about, giving you the information, and so that you could walk into any ham test and 
sit the examination and come out with your ham ticket, which means you could then go out and use this totally legally without fear of being fined or having your gear confiscated. So yeah, just tell me what you think. Are you interested? Yes or no? Anyway, let's look at this package from Hobby Wireless. Um, there's the receiver, nice compact little receiver, which means you could probably Velcro that to the side of your head and plug it into your Fat Sharks or your Sky Zones or whatever, because remember, these video glasses don't have built-in 3.3 gig receivers, so you're going to have to use an external receiver. No diversity, of course, it's just a plain, simple old receiver, and it's a, it's a good place to start. Um, hopefully later on they'll offer receivers with diversity. I don't know, maybe you won't need it. Comes with a stock rubber ducky linear antenna, don't need that, of course. Um, there's an AV cable, yeah, that's pretty standard. You can use your average AV cable. Um, that's your receive side. And also, you can get the um, IB Crazy antennas, video aerial systems. They've sent these ones, which is basically your, um, it's, um, looks like a skew planer. I don't know. They've got names for these things. I don't remember what they call them. They're, they're trade names for these things. But anyway, these are well known, well proven in other frequencies, so I don't see any reason why these wouldn't work really well on this system here. Um, on the transmit side, here is the transmitter that they've sent, okay? Um, it's not small, probably wouldn't fit easily into a mini quad, and it's a thousand milliwatts. Honestly, a thousand milliwatts. That's a watt. You can fry a turkey on that. You can cook fish and chips using that transmitter. It's, you know, I, mean, I don't know why they've made such a powerful transmitter to start with. Maybe it's because it was easier to retool that particular thing from whatever it was before, whether it was 5.8 or 2.4, probably 2.4. They probably re-engineered a 2.4 gigahertz transmitter up to 3.3, and it was easy to do it with a larger form factor. So, hey, who knows? What I will be doing in my testing is, because <laughs> I don't want to test one watt, because that could give you a range of many miles, I'm going to put a 10 decibel attenuator on there, which means it'll effectively have an output of 100 milliwatts. And I'll compare that to a 200 milliwatt 5.8 gig transmitter. So we get a comparison of what we'd be getting uh, with the, how much benefit we get from the lower frequency. Uh, we've also got this, which is a, oh, it's a plug. There you go, it's a plug. I told you, it's got AV connector on there. I don't know where the hell that goes, actually. Maybe that's part, no, it's not part of the receiver, it's part of the transmitter. Who knows? There must be a matching connector somewhere. Meh, who knows? Anyway, you've got these little leads here, which plug in to your camera and your power. I really don't know where that goes. Um, and there's another power lead. Where's this go? Oh, this must be for the... Oh, okay. I've got it all asked about face. This is the receiver leads, I think. Is that going to... Oh. Anyway, I've just opened the box. How would I know? I oh, will find out. And I... Has this got a battery or something? I don't know. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh. Oh, no. Dip switches. Dip switches to set your channels. I think there's more than you need because there ain't that many channels, trust me. Um, so I'll I say, I've just opened the box. So I'm going to have a look in here, find out what I can. That's obviously the power lead for that. You also get another 3.0 gig rubber ducky. Now, important thing, very, very important thing. You cannot tell the frequency of these antennas from the outside. They don't usually write on them what they are. This actually, well, that one's got a tell a lie. That's got three on it, but it's really hard to read. First thing I do when I get an antenna like this is put some masking tape on there and write the frequency on it. Because if that falls into your box of 5.8 antennas or 2.4 gig antennas and you put it on the wrong transmitter, you can cook the transmitter. So don't confuse these with rubber duckies from with other frequencies and some of them simply are not, are not marked are not labeled this is an sma connector because it's got the little pin in there if it was rpsma it would have a hole in there that's if, so if you're going to be looking for antennas as well and you don't want to go with the, the video, video aerial systems you can buy yourself some sma antennas but i don't think anyone else is making them if there's a demand i'll do a build, uh, another DIY, a diy video building your own 3.3 gigahertz skew planet and um, cloverleaf antennas, but we'll see how popular this goes. See if it works properly first, because there's a lot of what ifs, a lot of what ifs. If they have repurposed some 2.4 gigahertz technology to run on 3.3, which isn't that hard really, um, then there could be a possibility the receiver might be a little bit insensitive because it may not be properly designed for 3.3 gigs. I don't know, I'm speculating, so we'll find that out when we throw it on the bench. We also need to make sure that it's not going to spew stuff out on our GPS or our RC frequency, so I'll throw it on the spectrum analyzer. And lots of things to do. So if you've got suggestions, if there's anything you particularly want to see, then please you know, put that question in the comments section on this and I'll do my best to address your concerns and answer your questions. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Thank you to Hobby Wireless for sending in the system for review. And uh, I will now clear my bench and get on with the techie side of things. So there'll be an on the bench video coming up reasonably soon on this system. Bye for now.